It says, it abides in you and you need not that any man teach you. Does that mean we don't need apostle anymore? No. But people want to read that in there because they're using this hard drive. Can I talk about us today a little bit? We talked on the phone before I came and he was sharing with me a particular scripture. I'm not going to go into details. But it whetted my appetite because I want to know the truth. And I knew in my spirit, I didn't know what or the substance or what was going to be said, but I needed to hear. I knew I needed what was going to be shared with me today on a particular subject. I don't think we ever finished it. No, it's not finished. Yeah, it's not finished. <laughs> we didn't. But my spirit, I'm a feeder. When you learn that your consciousness cannot rule your life anymore, your natural consciousness, right. you must live out of the realm of the spirit and the rivers of the streams of the spirit. Right. Your whole life dynamic will take a total change. That's good stuff. He says, you will need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, here's the result. You will abide in Him. I'm learning and have learned, but I'm learning even more that I must abide and exist out of the anointing and not out of this. Come on. Don't clap. No. I want you to listen. Yeah. Clapping is a distraction. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm sorry if I stepped out of line. Okay. Right. I want you to I want you to I want you to know that God wants you to hear this. Because it's going to change you. It's going to conform you. The very thing the girls were singing. You girls or something else. You're singing tonight. I want to behold the image of Him till I look like Him. I'm learning that as I abide in the anointing, it's changing me. It's changing my life. It changes my very he existence. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Yes. It changes you. If you like your life the way it is and you need to get away from Jesus, good luck. <laughs> it ain't going to work. You need, if you don't like change, Jesus is not the number one guy you need to be hooked up with. <laughs> That's true. That is My life almost changes from day to day. Come on, come on. I'm not... Yes. We're talking about sonship here. Yes, yes. Freedom through from sonship. Freedom from what? The natural. The all the all consuming Adamic nature that interferes and wants to control the anointing of the Holy One that lives within you. Yes. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we will see him. As he is, because we shall be just like him. Yes. I travail, God says yes. in birth, again until Christ is formed in you. God of mercy, God of grace, God of wisdom, you have kept me. And me, you have not displaced. Will you hope in me and keep me from within that I might run this race yeah. and in the end I win, yes. win, yeah. win. That's God's heart. That's God's heart about you. Put your hand on yourself. That's God's heart about me. I want you to say it. Say it out loud so you can hear it. That's God's heart about me. All right. It's about me now. Do you remember reading the Scripture, and I know you've heard it preached, if you've been in church at all? Do 
Jesus said, said this. There's a couple of things. I just got an instruction. Praise God. Jesus said, I come to do thy will. It is written of me in the volume of the book. The entire Bible is about Jesus. It's not about other people, it's about Jesus. Genesis 1, 1 through Revelation 22, it's about Jesus. Jesus where? Jesus in me. Jesus in you. Jesus says this. In John's Gospel, let's turn there. There's two places in John that we go. said in John 14 verse 10 he says believes believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me it's a question not a statement it's a question and the words that I speak unto you I speak not of my The words that I speak, I speak not of my self. He didn't come talk about himself, did he? <laughs> but the Father that dwells in me, he does what? Works. Who did the works? Father. Who fed the 5,000? Who fed the 4,000? Jesus said, I only say what I hear my I only do what I see my father do. What about you? No, 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 no. No, no. No, no, no. no. I want you to hear this. What about me? That's how you respond. What about me? Where's the apostle at? Oh, there he is. I hold it till he comes, Lord. Yes, sir. Now turn back to John chapter four. Okay. I gotta find this verse. Here we go. In John chapter four, verse twenty-four, God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Do you know the glory of God came right down and started coming right here again tonight? I saw it. started coming right here. I saw it all the way across here. came down over the screen. And the more that we surrendered to praise the more the glory of God in a cloud begin to fill the building. And it stayed. And I said, Lord, we could just stay right here. It ain't about, I don't have to teach. I don't have to say a word. You can do more in a second than I can do in a millennium. We said it again. God can do more in a second than all of us combined can do in a millennium.
I want to say that in regard to what we're teaching about. We're teaching about sonship. We're teaching about us being sons of God. Jesus is speaking here. And He says, in the meanwhile, His disciples prayed, verse 31 and 32. It says, God is Spirit. They that worship Him must worship in Spirit and truth. Now let's go to verse 31 and 32. Meantime, while His disciples prayed, saying, Master, eat. Verse 32, but He said unto them, what did He say? I have meat to eat that you know not of. You know why I have not felt like I have been a part of the body of Christ in this Western culture for years? Because I've seen meat to eat that most of the church hasn't seen. Rhetoric, doctrines, personal philosophies, excesses in truths that are made into lies. Excesses. I've seen more excesses. Now, you know me, I'm Mr. Holy. I've never missed it. You know that's a lie because I've missed it. And I've missed it and I've missed it. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. God never gets mad at you. God never gets angry with you when you mess up. Now you got a little one sitting there. The last time he messed up, did you want to throw him out in the garbage? <laughs> Why? But you was upset with him. Because I love him. See, God loves you much more than you can even fathom how you love him. Of course, you never caused your parents any problem. <laughs> You're like me. We were perfect kids. <laughs> but Jesus said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And I've tried to fit. I've tried to fit in. I'm done with all of that. There's only one to be fit with. Now you've got to get this. Let it get you. There's only one that you've got to fit with, and it's the anointed one that is in you. Amen. That is your identity. That is the posture from which you operate as a member of the body of Christ. Now, we, you wouldn't care, Alice, if, if we took your leg off from the knee down tonight, would you? <laughs> Why would you miss it? Because I'm used to having it. You're used to having it. So you would not be so functional as you are now with it. Is that right? Of course, we could take Carolyn and cut her left arm off at the elbow. Would you miss it? She would be able to talk. <laughs> I ain't going there. <laughs> 